Hello friends and welcome to this video where I try out the new drawing aids and perspective tools that you can now use with the brush tool in Tahoma. But before we start, let me mention that I've added links in the description to each section of this tutorial and you can see them in the new timeline here on YouTube, so you can skip to the parts that you want to see. And if you're new here, I'm Darren T and I make tutorials for Tahoma and OpenTunes, so subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of when I release a new video. So last week I discussed Tahoma and showed the new drawing aids for drawing straight lines with the brush tool, and the perspective options for drawing towards a vanishing point. And you can take a look at that video by following the link in the card at the top of the screen or at the end of this video. But I didn't show any real drawing in that video, just the principles of how they work and small demonstrations of what you can do with them. But the options of what they can do really got me excited to try them out. So I decided to draw a complete background in two-point perspective using them. And I'm not too practiced in drawing backgrounds, and I struggle to come up with ideas for them from memory. So, as I often suggest to all of you, use reference. So I reached out for one of my books, and I thought what better book to use for inspiration than one of my books on perspective. So I grabbed this one. It's called Frame Perspective Volume 1. And you can find a link to this book in my kit page linked in the description below. And this is a great book for learning about perspective, covering all of the basics leading up to one, two and three point perspective, as well as curved lines and planes, with lots of clear examples and completed drawings throughout. It's definitely a book worth having, but I don't want this to be a sales pitch for the book, I just wanted to have a drawing to use as inspiration. And I really like Two Point Perspective and it's easy to understand. So after browsing through the book, I settled on trying to recreate this drawing. And it's shown drawn in a number of stages, but I picked out four distinct stages that I went through in this video. And they are sketching to get a rough feel for the drawing, the layout and position of everything on the page, then working out the horizon line and vanishing points, then overdrawing the main objects as plain boxes in perspective, and then adding some of the details over those boxes. So that'll then give me a guide to draw neatly over, which I'll do in part two of this project next week. I'll also add a little colour and use some of the effects, but we'll get to that next time. But just to show you, on the next page, you can see an example of this background being used, and how that might be used as inspiration for other angles of the scene. So before I go any further, you can download a package of this project from my Gumroad site. And that contains three Tahoma projects at various stages in the production of this piece, including the final one with all of the effects set up, and also you get a fully rendered image. But I'll add details of that to the end of this video. So let's get started. So I started off by creating a toons raster level, and then on the new palette entry, I set up the pencil brush and I just love using the pencil brush for sketching. It just looks so natural. And I had the book next to me with a drawing of the building, showing the correct perspective and how it's laid out. And I'd like to think I use this as reference rather than as copying, as I was sketching it by hand on screen. And you can see me using the eraser quite a lot, just to try and keep the lines a little bit neat, even though it's just a sketch that I was about to throw it away a few minutes later. So I just wanted to sketch out the rough shapes of the building, without adding too much detail, and this is just to get me to the next stage where I can set up the vanishing points and the horizon line for drawing in perspective, which is what I'm doing here on a vector level. And I chose a vector level so I could use the line tool and adjust them using the control point editor, which makes it easier to align these perspective lines. And once I've done this on both sides, I added a line to the ruler at the side of the viewer, and this showed me that my two vanishing points weren't level with the horizon line. So I simply rotated my sketch a little bit and adjusted the vector lines until they both sat on the horizon. And then I drew two red crosses just to show where the vanishing points will be added later. And as I explained in the video last week, if you do this on a vector level, it means you can add any number of Toons raster or standard raster levels and be able to set their vanishing points at exactly the same place. 
So now I'm on to the third stage of the process, which is adding some basic blocks over the sketch, but in the actual correct perspective. And to help out, as was recommended in the book, I'm drawing through the boxes so I can see the front and the back parts of them. And this really helped when trying to scale the rest of the building. As you can see, using a separate grey palette entry, I'm adding some temporary lines so I can size some parts of the building relative to the rest of the building. So you can see me drawing lots of crosses to mark the halfway point. And I do this so that the right hand part of the building can be half the height of the main building and also twice as deep. But you'll see shortly that I didn't do the same on the garage at the left hand side. So later on I'll end up redrawing the roof to make it half the height. And I think it's small details like this that can make a drawing seem more realistic. Whereas for the roof, I just guessed the size of it. But I did use the temporary markers again to make sure that the left hand side of the roof matched the right. And using the temporary markers is why I've got this third stage of drawing. So that when I get to drawing the actual lines, I've already drawn everything to the correct ratios. So here you can see me tidying up the lines a little bit, and that'll make it easier as I overdraw this neatly later. So here's the basic shape of the building, and now I'll just go ahead and add a few more details. So I'll start off with the swimming pool and the back wall, and then I move on to adding the upstairs patio and the railings around it. And the railings I draw as a simple line just to mark the position of where I'm going to add them later. Because although this stage is marking out the positions of all the elements, it isn't necessarily giving me all of the lines that I'm going to trace over. So the next stage of drawing the final line still leaves an element of artistry about it. It isn't simply tracing. So again for the garage, you can see me drawing some temporary lines so I can draw the doors centrally and to make sure the lines that go around the building match. So after drawing a marker line for where I'm going to add the windows, here's where I realised that I'd not drawn the garage to the correct height. I just estimated what it should be. So this is the stage to go back and make any changes. So I simply pulled out the eraser, ripped off the top of the garage, and then redrew it back at the halfway first story mark. And again to add realism to this building, to make the safety rails for the rear balcony fit with the rest of the building, I used temporary marker lines so they'd be precisely in line with the ones at the right of the building. So here again you see me using the halving mechanism to work out where the panelling should be, and then I just half each time to add a new line. And here you see me using the system to add thirds for adding the three windows. And on the final part of the building, I'm just adding the door here, and then the step outside, which I'll change my mind about using, but you'll see that next week. Because of the perspective, the second step just felt too large and took up too much space. So again, adding some more detail for the door, and then shortly I'll move on to the windows. Which I split into four, and as I said earlier, I just add the single lines to mark the position of the window, so at this stage I don't need to add thickness to the window frame. I'll do that in the next section. So here's the final piece at this stage, and I'm really happy with how it's turning out here. It's the most detailed perspective drawing that I've done digitally, so I'm really pleased at the outcome, and how much the new drawing features of Tahoma helped. And if you wanted to, you could just tidy up this drawing and add a bit of colour, but I wanted to use this as a guide for a full final drawing. So to me, this is just a detailed sketch. So next week I'll be drawing over this with the final line, and making a few small changes, and then I'll be adding some colour, a little background, and a reflection in the swimming pool using Tahoma's effects. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified when the video comes out. 
But if you can't wait for that, you can always download the project pack from my Gumroad site. And it contains the Tahoma project at this stage, and the projects for the next two stages, which are the final line and shadow project, and the final project, fully coloured with the effects added. And also it'll include full images of all three stages. So check out my Gumroad site for that download. And while you're there, maybe take a look at my backup tool for OpenTunes and Tahoma, for storing incremental backups of your project, so you can revert to an older version if you change your mind, or to later see the progress of your project, which is what I use to create and store these three projects. So that's part one of this perspective background drawing. Join me next week for part two, and we'll see the finished piece. And that's a Darren T. Have you always wanted to animate, but didn't know how to start, and software seemed expensive and difficult to use? Well, with OpenTunes, it's free, powerful, and once you know how, it's easy to use. And it's my mission to get you animating with it today. Hi, my name's Darren, and I've been teaching OpenTunes for the past three years, showing thousands of students, just like you, how easy it is to animate with, and cutting through the jargon to show that anyone can animate with it. And by the end of the course, you'll be able to animate traditionally using OpenTunes. And the course is designed for students brand new to OpenTunes, as well as those new to animation. So take a look at the free lessons I've offered below, and then why not sign up and join me animating traditionally with OpenTunes.